So today we're going to take a quick look at Polymer, which is by Google, which is a polyfill for web components. Web components is a new thing in HTML that lets you define your own custom HTML elements with their own attributes. Okay? Google's Polymer also gives you a whole set of components to use called core, so core elements, and they also give you a whole other set of elements called paper elements that are styled to match Google's material design. And you can go to polymerproject.org to see all of those components and how to use it all. But I'm just going to do a quick overview of how to use it and what some of the cool things you can do. So one of the first things that uh, we're going to look at is how to use this. So um, I've got an app over here on the left. And just to show you an example of this, um, Google gives us a core scaffold that gives us this left sidebar and this middle content. So we've got a little nav up here, we've got a list over here, a chat list down here, and an input bar down here. All this style is given to us. If we decrease the browser, you can see that it's given to us in a single list view, and if we click this, you can see it moves out our sidebar. So that's just a standard thing that they've given us there, kind of nice. Um, and if I hit, if I'm typing on the page here, I can say new message and I hit enter and it adds it to the bottom of the page here. And then this left sidebar here does a, a Ajax call to YouTube with that search query and shows me all of the artists that made those videos. And that's what the left sidebar is. Okay. So that's, that's the basicness of our app. So let's talk about how we made it back over here in the code. First thing we've done is we've, we've Bower installed, uh, Polymer and core elements and paper elements. That allows us um, to have, and actually, I'm missing one more here, which is a, an, another component that I have that actually allows us to do timestamps, right? So just another component that you can get from GitHub, Bower allows you to install them. Okay, so just structure of this, we've got uh, in the head tag, we've got these things called HTML imports, these import HTML files, and these HTML files can have other JavaScript imports, they can have other things or elements in them. So we're just importing a bunch of components here then we have a style sheet. Lastly, what we have here is a body tag. Now inside our body tag, we have a couple attributes that we've added. Unresolved is a cool one that allows the page to not come in yet until the com components have loaded. Uh, it's, it's very quick, but you, there's it could be a snap second that the user sees components not loaded, so that's really nice. So then we have everything's wrapped in a template now, our, uh, this main template variable. Now the cool thing about Polymer's template is that with this auto binding attribute, it gives you two way data binding into the template on the element itself. Now, what I mean by that is if I add anything inside of this template that has double curly braces, that variable is bound to the, the element itself. So let me just show you a, a, a small example of this. So I'll, I'll cut out, well, I'll cut out the interior of this inside. Okay, so I've cut the interior out. I'm going to make an h1 tag with a double thing called my var. Okay, just to show you what this does. So all this is going to do is it's going to have a variable that I expect to be bound. And what I mean by bound is this template dot my var should exist, right? So in reference to this element dot my var should exist. And when I change that, it should update this. So I'll refresh my page. There's not going to be anything here. But if I go to console and type in template dot my var equals Sean, boom, you can see our page is updated now with my name. And that's because it's bound to that variable. Okay, so that's how data binding works with Polymer. Works really well. So I'll undo that and put our page back. So we've got, we've got our things built out. Let me just show you what a couple of these repeaters look like because they're important. So if you have data, so let's say we have this message list, you're allowed to go inside of a template element, which basically just defines what your loop is going to be. Okay. Once it's rendered, the stuff inside of the template gets rendered without this template thing being there. Okay. Let me explain. If you get this template repeat, and it's repeating over this list, and I've got this div here, this div called user list parent. This is the thing that will go inside of this parent div, okay? Basically, this template thing doesn't even exist after it's rendered. In fact, if I inspect the page here and show it, you can see that we literally have that div a thousand times. Now, of course, we do have the template above it, right? It's still in here, but it's not used by anything. At this point, it was only used in order to render the template, and then boom, here's everything in the list. So that's how a repeater works, and it's pretty readable, right? So a message list is template.message list. Again, I can, I can prove to you over here that template.message list is that entire list. So that's, again, you can see the relationship there. And I'm looping over it. And then once I'm inside of it, I have access to message. And I can say message.color, message.status, message.e, all these things that we have set up for data. 
One other really cool thing about data binding is that it can bind from user input. So you can see down here we have a paper input element, which is just like an input text box, so the one over here that I can type in. Now that is going to be continually setting the value of the input element, just like HTML always does. But because I have that bound to a variable, that variable always changes, right? So if I start typing in here, this is a test, and type in template.input, you can see that is what it is. And if I update it, my console is updated too because that variable is live. Now one of the cool things about the data binding is that I can put this anywhere. So I can take this input up here and change it in our title like that and now once I refresh the page as I'm as I'm typing here as I'm typing here you can see the title is updating too because they're bound to the same thing. So this whole thing is getting re-rendered. Now one other kind of cool thing that you can do with this is uh, have these custom elements that do some pretty crazy stuff, like Ajax. So over here we have core Ajax, which is just another core component, whose job is simply just to call an Ajax function and then set a response. So core Ajax calls this URL, passes it these parameters, and then it sets its response to, so this is the response that gets pulled out from the web component, and I'm setting it to a data bound variable, resp, which I have a template above it that uses resp in order to render the list on the left. This is how the YouTube thing works. Now the last cool thing about this is the YouTube query that I'm using is this Q value, and I'm setting it to something called committed value. Committed value is not special, it's down here and set by committed value in the paper input. Committed value is not necessarily exactly what you're typing in, it's what you've typed in in an input box once you've hit enter. So you can see how this little chain, we've got an input element that has a value that's bound to input, and when you hit enter, it sets committed value, which sets this bound property, which is set in the params JSON here of core Ajax, which knows, because of auto, whenever params is updated, it will re-render the Ajax, which it does, sets its response to response, and then sets that to its bound variable, which is set up here in this repeater. So you can see how they all connect and tie together to make a nice succinct thing. One thing causes another. Just a quick look at the JavaScript and then we're done. I'm just gonna, basically this just sets up our random data, sets up the template variable like I showed you before. We set up a couple variables on template that we want to use in the template. Then you can also set functions. So let me show you check key. Back here you can see the paper input has an on key up which calls check key which is not found anywhere else in here, but it is just like the other properties on the template, template.checkkey, just like everything else, except in this case, it's a function, which it's allowed to be. So template.checkkey is a function, it does some stuff. Send message is a function that it calls, which just sets up a, a packet of data and, call, and doesn't call anything, it just sets more data on the thing. And the last interesting piece to note here is that once the template has done that render, right? So this causes a render. Once that's done, I use async to make sure it's done. I go ahead and scroll to the bottom, right? So it's, it, you know, I'm just giving you a quick overview of this, but you can see how Polymer is pretty cool with the data binding and custom elements. It's a really nice way to, to write and modularize your code, um, and I really like it. The one thing I'm not really sure of so far is there's not really a framework built around Polymer yet, so this, it's not so simple to have routes. They do have something for routes, but it's not so simple. And then if you want to have models and controllers, you kind of have to bring your own. So it's not a full framework, but it is a really interesting one, and it means that you can do a lot with not so much code.